In this video, we're going to discover how to find the area of any triangle. So suppose I give you this triangle, how would you find its area? Well, so far we only know how to find areas of rectangles. We get the area by multiplying one of the sides of the rectangle by the other side. Now let's try to use this property to help us find the area of this triangle. Here, I put the triangle we have inside a rectangle. And now we know that the area of the rectangle is this side times this side. But how does that help us find the area of the triangle? Well, let's drop the altitude in the triangle. Then, as you can see, we split the rectangle into two smaller rectangles, this rectangle and this rectangle. And each of those rectangles is split in half by one of its diagonals. We have that this triangle and this triangle are exactly the same. They are congruent because the diagonal of a rectangle always splits it in two equal parts. And so this area here equals this area here. And similarly, the area here equals the area here. I'm going to call this side here C and the altitude H. And of course, because of the rectangles, this segment also equals H and this segment also equals H. I'm going to call the area of this triangle A, and then the area of this triangle is also A. If the area of this triangle is B, then the area of this triangle is also B. And therefore, C times H equals 2 times a plus 2 times b, because that's the area of the rectangle. Now we take this equation and divide both sides by 2, and we get that ch divided by 2 equals a plus b, the 2's cancelled out, and but a plus b, notice, is the area we've been looking for. This is the area of the triangle, and I'm denoting this area by s of the triangle. And now that we know that the area of the triangle is c, the base, times h, the height, it's natural to ask what happens if we start moving this point along this parallel line, because this side of the triangle would still be C, and the altitude on the triangle would still be the same length, H, and then the area of the triangle would be unchanged. I'll start moving this point along this parallel line to see if the area changes in any way. The area indeed seems to stay constant when I move this point along this parallel line. Now the question is, what happens when this angle here becomes obtuse so that the altitude doesn't fall within the range of this segment here? Well, let's see how we can resolve this situation. I'm going to put this triangle inside of a rectangle like this, and then the area of a rectangle is this side times this side. Now I'm going to label the sides. Now this is x, this is c, the base of the triangle, this is h, and this is h, which is the altitude of the triangle, and this here is the sum of x and c. Now I can split the area of this rectangle between area B, area A, and area S of the triangle. Notice that area B here equals area B of this triangle, because we have a rectangle which we split in half. And so A plus S of the triangle equals B. Now what's the area of A? Oh, well, it's H times X divided by 2 and divided by 2 because h times x is the area of this rectangle here, if we imagine that we've dropped an altitude here, and then divided by 2 because this area here equals this area here, so the diagonal of the rectangle splits the area in half. b has an area of h times c plus x divided by 2, because h times c plus x is the area of the whole rectangle, and this line splits it into two parts with equal areas. And so we get this equation here. Notice that x times h divided by 2 cancels out with this x times h divided by 2. And so the only thing that left is s of the triangle on this side and c times h divided by 2 on the other side. And so we got the same result as before. s of the triangle equals c times h divided by 2. The base times the height divided by 2. Hence, no matter where we put the third vertex of the triangle, as long as it stays on that parallel line, the area of the triangle is always going to stay the same. The base of the triangle c times the height of the triangle, h, divided by 2. This statement is also true in the opposite direction. This is what I mean. Suppose that I have two triangles that share a common side, and I'm wondering if this line, the red line here, is parallel to this one. Well, necessary and sufficient condition for this line to be parallel is that the area of this triangle equals the area of this triangle. Indeed, suppose that the two areas are equal. The area of this triangle would be c times h1 divided by 2, and the area of the other triangle would be c times h2 divided by 2. And now that s2 equals s1, then c times h1 divided by 2 equals c times h2 divided by 2. And so we can cancel out the c and the 2s, and then we get h1 equals h2. And now consider this quadrilateral 
we have two segments that are parallel, so they're parallel because they're both perpendicular to this side, and that are equal. And therefore, this here is a parallelogram. But in a parallelogram, we know that this angle equals this angle. And so here and here, we have 90 degrees. And therefore, this is parallel to this. And the quadrilateral is actually a rectangle. Here's a really nice application of what we've learned so far. Turns out that there exists a really nice relationship between the area of a triangle, its semi-perimeter, and the radius of its incircle. First, let's call the radius r, and the sides of the triangle, let's label them a, b, and c. Now, of course, because the three sides are tangent to the circle, we have that this is a 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. Therefore, the area of this triangle would be c times r divided by 2, the area of this triangle would be a times r divided by 2, and the area of this triangle would be b times r divided by 2. And so the area of the whole triangle would be the sum of the three areas. So it would be c times r divided by 2 plus a times r divided by 2 plus b times r divided by 2. But now this expression that we got can be rewritten as a plus b plus c divided by 2, the whole thing times r. But a plus b plus c divided by 2, this is the semi-perimeter. And therefore, the area of the triangle is the semi-perimeter times the radius of the incircle. Here's the optional problem. It's actually really similar to the one we just did. We have a triangle, and this is its x circle with respect to the side c. And rc is the radius of that x circle. We need to prove that the area of the triangle equals s minus c, so semi-perimeter minus c, times rc, where semi-perimeter is a plus b plus c divided by 2. And here's the solution. Firstly, since the x circle is tangent to all three sides of the triangle, we know that this angle is 90, this angle is 90, and this angle is 90. Now let's notice that the area of the triangle plus the area of this triangle equals the area of this quadrilateral. But the area of this quadrilateral can also be written as the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle. And therefore, the area of the triangle equals this area plus this area minus this area. First, what's the area of this triangle? Well, it's the base A times the height RC. So it's A times RC divided by 2. And what's the area of this triangle? Well, it's the base B times the height RC and divided by 2. So we get this. And finally, what's the area of this triangle? Well, it's C times RC divided by 2. So we get this and we subtract it because the area of the triangle is indeed this area plus this area, and then minus this area. And now from here, we get this, and from this, we get this. This is the semi-perimeter, and therefore, the area of the triangle equals semi-perimeter minus c times rc as desired.